2019 MIT Integration B Qualifying Exam Problem 6 here, and this is all I have to say about this problem. Um, yes, boring. Uh, and I probably shouldn't tell you that it's boring at the start of this video, but, you know, maybe you're into boring. Maybe boring is your cup of tea. So here goes. All right, now, um, if we take this integrand, other than the dx, then this is what we'd have. And clearly this here is just a product of two binomials. One binomial and then two binomial, right? So if we multiply the binomials carefully, then we're going to get this. And um, because math people don't like leading with negatives, if we rearrange this here so that uh, we lead with the positive terms, it's going to look like this. And then here we reckon that since we've got un, deux, trois, quatre, um, quantities in a sum and difference, what we could do is turn this integral into four integrals with pluses and minus signs in between them. So that would be this. And if we call the first integral A, and so then naturally the second integral is B. Uh, yeah, we know our A, B, C, and even Ds, right? And so that means that part one is going to be about A. So uh, here goes A. And here, let's first make a u substitution for 3x. And so if we do that, then um, u will be 3x. So this is 3x, which should mean du is 3dx, from which we gather that a third du is dx. So this here is going to be a third du, and this is going to turn into a u, right? And so that means that a will look first like this. Here's the third du in place of dx, and then 3x is u, so there that is, right? Okay, and then what I did is reckon that cosine squared u is equal to a half times um, cosine 2u plus 1, and that's using the power reduction formula for cosine. Um, I have a video proving the power reduction formula both for um, cosine and sine, so I'll link um, that video or those two videos below this. So um, yeah, um, check them out if you want. And um, otherwise, where um, do we go from here? Well, first, the half and the third can combine into a sixth. So if we do that, then we write this, right? And then next, the antiderivative of cosine 2u is a half sine 2u. And the antiderivative of 1du is just u, right? And so um, remember, there's a sixth in front. But yeah, uh, doing what I just said, we'd have a sixth times the antiderivative of cosine to u, a half sine to u, and then the antiderivative of 1 du, which is u, but there's a sixth in front, so that, yeah? Okay, and then here we call back what we said was u. Remember, u is 3x, and so 2u is 6x, right? And so if we do that, then we uh, will finish solving a, which is going to look like this in its final form, right? Okay, so on to b. Um, and um, so for b, um, for b, what's useful is what's called in trigonometry uh, the product to sum formulas, right? Because we have a product of sine and cosine here. And there's a product to some formula uh, for sine and cosine that's helpful, which says sine alpha times cosine beta is equal to this right-hand side. So if we let alpha equal 2x and beta equal 3x, then we can use this right-hand side instead of our integrand here, yeah? Okay, as I said, let alpha equal 2x and beta equal 3x. And so then it means that this here, which, has our, which is our integrand, right, is going to turn first into this. Uh, but then by using this right-hand side, we have this. And how nice, because this here uh, creates some convenience. 3x plus 2x is 5x. And this here, 3x minus 2x is just x, right? Okay, okay, okay. So doing that, we see that uh, we can first write this, right? And then next... Um, we see that this here is the same as this here, right? And that again is because this here is the same as this here, right? Okay, okay, okay. Cool, cool, cool. And then now uh, we do the antiderivative of um, sine 5x, which is going to be 1 over 5 times negative 1 times cosine 5x. Uh, let me say it better. The antiderivative of sine 5x is negative a fifth times cosine 5x, right? And then the antiderivative of negative sine x is just 
cosacs. But remember, there's this one half multiplying both of the things I spoke of, both antiderivatives I spoke of, will be multiplied by a half. So um, when that half right here is taken into account, uh, what we're going to get is negative a tenth cosine 5x and a half cosine 5x. Here, clearly, I've showed that this integral here can be splitted and split, splitted. Um, this integral can be split into two integrals uh, like this, but you know, you don't have to. Uh, I didn't uh, split them when I was talking to you, so yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, but you get it, you get it. So B is completely solved now, but I do not want to test your memory or mine, so let's recall that our solution to the integral A was this, and then let's write the solution for B under it, because um, yeah. Uh, we need to keep track, perhaps, um, or it'll help us keep track, All right? Okay, so um, part three. Part three is going to be about, um, well, it's going to use the product to some formula also, uh, but it's going to be about this integral, right? Like, And uh, notice that this integral has a negative uh, in front of it, right? But yeah, unsurprisingly, because we see this, what we're going to use is the product to sum formulas. Yes, this is a sum because subtraction is just adding a negative quantity, right? Right? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so it's not like incorrectly named. Um, okay, but yeah, if we let b equal 2019x and um, not b, beta equal 2019x, b was an integral, right? Beta equal 2019x and alpha 3x. Uh, note that beta is equal to 673 times alpha. Like, it's easy to see that uh, 2019 is divisible by 3 because the sum of its digits is divisible by 3. Um, yeah, okay, okay, okay. So that's to say 2019 is equal to 673 times 3. So 2019x is 673 times 3x, but 3x is alpha. Yeah, okay, 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 cool, cool, cool. Um, so we see that this fella here is going to look like this here, right? And that's just substituting alpha and beta uh, with uh, beta having the new name 673 alpha, right? Okay, and then here we see that we get 674 alpha, and here we get 672 alpha, right, right, right? Okay, um, and then, and then um, we do that, right, what, what I just said, and then we integrate, right? And uh, when we do the integral, uh, first, uh, this one half can come out of um, the integral sign, and then the antiderivative of sine 674 alpha um, is going to first have me uh, figure out what dx is. So, uh, before I proceed, uh, remember we had said that alpha is equal to 3x, right? Um, and yeah, like because we hadn't replaced dx uh, from uh, the integral in uh, c here, we only replaced these guys, right? Okay, okay. Anyway, you get it because we said alpha is 3x d alpha is 3dx, yeah, you get it, you get it, and so um, when we plug in, in place of uh, dx, a third d alpha right here, we can combine it to the one half here, the one half here, and write a sixth, see, like, I can't speak anymore, because um, this, um, yeah, is tedious, <laughs> okay, uh, but first, yeah, just explicitly showing you the replacement of dx with a third d alpha, and then, as I said, combining the one half and um, the one-third here into a sixth, uh, we get this here, right? Okay, and then the antiderivative of sine 674 alpha, right, uh, is going to be negative cosine 674 alpha divided by 674, right? Um, but yeah, uh, instead of having a negative on the antiderivative, why don't we throw this negative inside, right? So we have negative sine, and its antiderivative is going to be exactly cosine. And of course, throwing this negative inside means distributing it so we don't just have it here, right? We don't just have a negative sign here. We'll have a plus cosine in this part, right? So so, so let's do that, right, uh, first, and then do the anti-differentiation. Uh, uh, I spoke you through the first part, which is uh, the antiderivative of now negative sine 674 alpha is going to be um, cosine 674 alpha divided by 674, but the 674 in the denominator of the antiderivative will be multiplied by a 6 here, so it's 4044. And then, you know, you know how to do this, like, um, okay, okay, and so yeah, that, right, right, okay, 
um, and then and then what uh, we take note of our answer here in C and go to the final part part four for D right and so for D uh, because it's so similar to C I'm just gonna display the slides quickly obviously you can pause if you need to but I'm not gonna talk you through the details because um, yeah I just talked you through the details and um, C and the details here are very very similar as you can see yeah okay 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 cool 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 um so 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 um yeah this is what we get and this is going to be our final answer so now that we have our final answer for d uh we combine it to a b and c to see that um this is what we'd have and somehow if you have the time and you want to plug in um two pi take that value and subtract from it what you get when you plug in negative 2 pi into all of this then you could do that but um, already I feel like I wasted my time <laughs> making this video um, so I'm not gonna uh, show you the details of the computation um, but if you do it correctly what you'll find is that you get 2 pi um, when a plus b plus c plus d is evaluated from um, uh, negative 2 pi to 2 pi yeah okay cool 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 I hope you enjoyed this somehow if you made it this far but otherwise keep watching and problem 7 will be next take care